uh, still Kakaki, the African voice, this uh, Tuesday. Time for us now to uh, look at Kakaki Socials. Rena Obozege is joining us. Morning, Rena. Good morning, morning Rena. How are you today? Very well, thank you. What's cooking? <laughs> oh, jollof rice. Okay. Make sure you give me a plate. Ghana or Nigeria? Nigeria, definitely. Just okay. make sure you give me a plate, whether Ghana or Nigeria. Mm, I, I know for men, you know, we are taught traditionally that you guys need more. So I'll definitely give you two plates by the time I'm done with the show. Cool. Why are we going to keep it in? We'll see you after this. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. Good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm Rena Obozege. Now, the federal government has approved the scrapping and measure of some of its departments and agencies. This is in line with the Orusanya report of the defunct Presidential Committee on Restructuring and Rationalization of Parastatals, Commissions and Agencies charged Oh, that was shared by Steve Orusaya. The implementation plan was announced on Monday at a session with newsmen in the State House after a meeting of the Federal Executive Council that was presided over by the President himself, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, for agencies that are required to be merged, I'll take it. Um, National Agency for Control of AIDS, HIV AIDS, NACA to be merged with the Center for Disease Control in the Federal Ministry of Health. National Emergency Management Agency to be merged with the National Commission for Refugee Migration and Internally Displaced Persons. The National Salaries, Income and Wages Commission to be subsumed into the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission. The Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution to be subsumed under the Institute for International Affairs the Public Complaints Commission to be subsumed under the National Human Rights Commission. For agencies to be relocated, the Niger Delta Power Holding Company to be relocated to the Ministry of Power. In addition, Mr. President constituted a committee that would um, work within a 12-week period to ensure that the necessary um, restructuring and legislative amendments that are needed to ensure the full actualization of these approvals are uh, granted here. Well, that's the much we can take of that six minutes timeout. But overall, four agencies are to be relocated, nine subsumed, 15 merged, and two scrapped totally. Let's see how this met netizens here today. Pastor Hu tweeting at Pastor Mave, he says, removed fuel subsidy, removed forex subsidy. Now fully implementing the Orosia report, President Tinubu is taking the boldest, bravest political decision by any president in the history of this country. Again, if you are still in doubt, Tinubu will be best decision Nigerians ever took. Well, he's definitely on the side of um, the president and of a of course. Salami says this would save cost. I hope the saved cost will be well utilized. But then on the other side is Abami who says, please let Mr. President, my president, implement the full Orancia report. This report is not limited to agencies only. It merges ministries also. Please don't let's push only agencies' narratives. And he says, APC till I die. Die hard fan right there. Okay, Irene says, this list is not complete until I see that National Hajj Commission and Christian Pilgrim Commission is scrapped completely because it has no benefit whatsoever to Nigeria and Nigerians. All right, this was in 2020. It was brought back yesterday while all of that stranded that Buhari had asked um, SGF and um, HOS2 to scrap and merge some agencies, but then it never happened, and they are concerned if this will also be the case. Also, Jonathan, in the next slide, has also attempted to implement that, but it never also happened. And the, the, the worry right now is, is Tinubu's own full implementation order going to be like this or i'm not sure they even went this far the previous government they never went really far like this to say okay this is what we are scrapping and merging so maybe they are on it but then people are calling for the full implementation just to have a leaner government and safe costs but two more stories well, the Nigerian Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Deli Alake, was also on Monday's strength table. He was there because he was training. That was after pictures of Nigeria's booth at the recently held 30th edition of investing in mining 
Indaba in Cape Town, South Africa, made it online. Well, a netizen had called him out as Delia Lake with pictures from the event, and he was wondering how that was marketing Nigeria in good light. This is technically the ambience of the exhibition stand. If you go further, you will see Sierra Leone stand looking beautiful in people's judgment and in the eye of course but here is nigeria stand or was nigeria stand at that um, exhibition uh, mineral resources in south africa okay we had two chairs maybe an attendee and an attendant we had a table maybe maps of the world right there and then we have a waste bin and it has generated conversation. Let's see how this met netizens on the space of social media. Okay, he's reacting to this and he says, we are trying to run a global economy to attract global investors and our branding must be unique and top-notch at the international stage. With the billions of budget on the Solid and Mines Ministry, such a shambolic display can't be explained away on technicality. Also, in reaction to this, um, he continues. He says it costs less than one millionaire to fully brand that boot. With a 16 millionaire budget, see the shabby display of incompetence. Alaka Dele, from your department, you deserve to be queried despite your media background. And he says Dele Alaka messed up. Also, in reaction to this is Uncle Deji, who attached the pictures from Sierra Leone at Nigeria's stands. And he says, Mr. President, please task EFCC to probe what transpired here. Nigeria is the giant of Africa, not Sierra Leone, that Nigerian military supports to reinstall an elected government and was overthrown by force. He's so pained that was supposed to be the big brother and remain the big brother. Also, let's see more thoughts on this. Um, but then this is coming from the other side of the room, though. It says the cost of having a pavilion at an international stand or event is really high. The recently concluded mining in Daba in South Africa costs 2k pounds per person regardless of where you are coming from. I didn't know how much it costs to do what Sirelon did but it can't be less than $70,000 for the week long event. We want our government to, out, to cut costs. I don't think spending $70k dollars on a 7 day pavilion is justifiable and people were wondering, Jay, what does it take to do marketing? If you have a chair and a table, I mean people can just do business and go but then I think uh, people are watching and they are saying what are you doing with our money that wasn't really beautiful in their opinion but let's move away from that to say that to stand the free fall of the Naira, the senator representing Delta North Senatorial District, Ned Unwoko, last week called for a complete ban on dollar transactions in Nigeria. According to him, Nigeria cannot survive the use of dual currencies and so urgent measures like his suggestion must be taken to save the Naira. Thank you, Mr. President. The first thing, I lamented the, the fun, fundamental problem we have in Nigeria, and that is the use of dual currencies in Nigeria. There is no other economy that can survive with that. We must understand that we have relegated Naira to the background. Everybody is talking about dollars, and dollar is what is causing the problems. We must, Mr. President, or it might be a difficult thing to contemplate but it has to be done what has to be done is that we have to stop the use of dollars in nigeria once you do that mr president everything will begin to take shape anybody who is coming to nigeria as a tourist must come here with naira yes by the time you make it compulsory for people to come into nigeria with naira the need for naira the demand for naira will become prevalent in those countries. All right, let's have some thoughts on this from Instagram. I mean, it was last week, but then reactions haven't stopped trailing this. Latch Finger says he's right. Before we go to other countries, we ensure we get their currencies, and no other countries allow a foreign currency to be spent in their country. 
Why is Nigeria different? Why do we allow dollar to be a legal tender in Nigeria? All this needs to be looked into for a better and flourishing economy. And also from Instagram too is Keji Giwa who says, to do this, you have to create enabling factors that will give the Naira value. To ban dollars, you actually need to ban import. To ban imports, you need to have the infrastructure to create an enabling environment for Nigerians to manufacture at home. I mean, more needs for production from home and um, exports, uh, exports rather. Mushroom matters, it says, valid point, no spending dollars, no saving in dollars, and they should also enable a cut for international payment. All the fuse about dollars need to stop. International payment, very key there, but um, Kesolo says most of them them sitting there has bags full of dollars stored in their houses. Now, poor men, they suffer around pass. Oh, well, are you a neighbor to them or anything? But yeah, we do know, even though it's not in the news, that I mean, the bigger you are, the more dollars you have. But coming out to say that it should be banned, it definitely means that maybe you've lessened the amount in your house or something. So that's how we call it a day today on Kakaki Social. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Rena OBO, we can't continue outside TV. Welcome back. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for that, Rena. But, you know, again, it is the political will of the spenders of the dollars. And again, it goes back to the issue that they've had back and forth with the BDCs as well. Those are the people who would change that dollar for an era. How do they also look at the policy? I, I, I think beyond the conversation at the National Assembly is real-time execution of mm -hmm. those conversations. True. Which is sometimes non-existent. For me, I think the latest um, uh, regulation of the BDCs by the central bank mm. will take away a lot of that problem if not everything. You because think so? by the Yes, by the time you stop, you don't have a dollar account anymore. Mm -hmm. By the time, each time you buy dollar, your details are taken. You, you, you know... Buy the, dollars the, and your details are taken. Yes, I mean, people... You, hold on. If, okay. You need to go read the new regulations mm -hmm. and you'll understand clearly that the CBN is tightening the news on the use of the dollar in Nigeria. It, it's regulated everywhere else you go to. Yes, it is. And that's is. what the CBN is doing. But the thing is, like every other law, as netizens would say, they are made for the poorer um, group of the society. Mm. So we don't even have the dollars. It is the people who have the dollars. How that's are they going to go? Because they, they won't even go to the bank. They will just call a BDC operator and say, bring this amount. And it is the this politicians that have the BDC. Yes. Going back so, to what no, I'm saying that's about why, political. That's why I said you need to read the regulations. <laughs> the licensing of BDCs will take away a lot of those BDCs because you mm. only have, you have two tiers now, tier one, tier two. And there, are, there can only be five tier one BDCs mm. in Nigeria. Mm. Just look at the details of the regulation. You'll understand that it will tighten the news on the use of the dollar. I just hope from so. the policies to the cocoa, because it's back to the politicians and the class suicide Majid was talking about. But anyway, that's <laughs> another story for another day. Anyway, let, let, let's allow you to, to take a bow. Thank you. Thank you so Have much, Have a lovely Rena. day. Have a great day. All right. Kakaki,